am Neelam Gupta, founder president of RO Foundation, and I am part of the DLC's uh, CSR and Philanthropic Committee, Delhi chapter. Let me ask you something today. How many of you would agree if a woman, instead of Putin, was the president of Russia, do you think this war would have happened? I strongly feel that this war would never have happened if there was a woman leadership in Russia. So are we talking about women's empowerment here? Are we talking about more leadership roles for women across the world? So the topic for today is women's empowerment as a vehicle for national development. I have an NGO. We started working for people back in 2001. In fact, the seed was born in my mind while I was still in school, looking at poverty, looking at deprivation, looking at inequality, children not going to school, especially girl child. I was very disturbed and wanted to do something for the society. But it took me a while. It was 2000 before I could give shape to my dreams. And then I founded RO Foundation, a ray of hope the name which was already there in my mind a couple of decades back, and started working with like-minded people on elevation of poverty. Poverty as we understand, people being poor, the economic poverty. But when you enter the field, when you go into the uh, communities, when, we, you, when you go into rural India, people have various other kinds of poverty. That's what we call today as multidimensional poverty. People are educationally poor. People are poor health-wise. Uh, they do not have the access to many amenities that we have in cities. So all in all, uh, we started working on multidimensional poverty. And then what happened? We found that women were even more disadvantaged. They were even more poor if you look at multidimensional poverty. So that is where RO Foundation as an organization and I as a founder president of uh, RO Foundation, we decided that our processes, our work, our programs have to focus on women. And women's empowerment can only be, they can be the only vehicle for national development. Women have to be included in the national development processes. Women have to come central to the development processes. So here, we started with holding hands of women, giving them, empowering women. And uh, can you imagine, in 1951, when we started almost after independence, the women's literacy, literacy is one of the indicators of empowerment and one of the indicators of how well uh, a segment is uh, figuring in the development process. It was only 18%. And some of the states I was shocked to read had only 3% women's literacy, 2%, which is almost as negligible. So women were totally illiterate. They did not understand anything. They were totally ignorant. So uh, coming from that background of 1951, we've come a long, long way. In 2011, our figures, our data showed that women's empowerment stood at 74%. But then in today's fast changing digital world, technology driven world, where are we with that 74% uh, literacy? Where are our women? Where are they? Where are they participating in the development process? How many women leaders we have? Then how many women are there in the boardrooms? 90% of the boardrooms are of, filled with men. Only 24.4% women in India are participating in the workforce. Similarly, out of 63 million women which are working as entrepreneurs, only 14% are women. Where are women? We don't see women. Women are discriminated right from the birth. That is what we see around us. So here, you know, even today, uh, I think last week there was a report, Gender Parity Index, released by UNICEF. India has got 135th rank in the world in Gender Parity Index. Last year there was a report by McKinsey. Uh, it said that if all women participated in the development process, our turnover could be 12 trillion by 2025. So that is where the gap is. That is where the women are going missing. Participation of women in GDP is only 17%. Whereas for men, it is 38%. So where are we going? We are very happy. We, have, we are in a golden era. That is what we say. We have a demographic dividend. What does it mean? 60% of our population 
is below 29 years of age. Now, if 50% of that population, which comprises of girls and women, is not rising up to its true potential, then where is our demographic dividend? So all in all, Aro Foundation, right from the beginning, could see that focus on women is of utmost importance. Women are central to the development process. In case we do not take women forward, our development will be skewed. We will not get the desired result. Uh, when our leadership talks about a five trillion economy, how are we going to achieve it? I ask everyone, is it possible to achieve it with a 50% population going uh, for economic development? Do you know how many women are in science and technology courses? Do you know how many women are rising uh, in unconventional areas? Very, very few. We only see some urban women who are going like that, who are going places, who are in different, uh, you know, rising pedestals. We were very happy when Mangalyan was launched and we saw an all-women crew. We become very happy and elated when there is a there is a crew of Air India with all women going and taking a 20-hour flight to San Francisco. Let me take you to another uh, scenario. While we are working in the field, while we are going to villages, think of, an, uh, think of a village in the interior of UP, a backward village. Utmost backwardness for women. They remain in Parda. They are not allowed to go out. The girls are not allowed to go to colleges because the college is far away. How will they go? There is no transport. There is a security problem. So while working uh, for skill development projects, we try to take out women from such areas so that they can make a career for themselves. They can come out and they can be a part of development process. What do you think when you see a girl, when you find a girl who says her name is Nirasha? Means disappointment. How can a parent give such a name to a daughter? Because she was born after two daughters. She was the third daughter. She was the most unwelcome part of the family. And she was called Nirasha. She was not given opportunities to study fully. She had a very great potential. But she could not study. She dropped out of school. When we reached her, we had to convince her parents to allow her to go in for skill development, to go in for a job placement training so that she can remove the poverty of her family. The family was very poor, but so backward that they will not allow the girls to go out. With great convincing and with a lot of persuasion, we could bring that girl out. And we took her under our fold and gave her the training. Three months training, residential training was given to her. And today, that girl, a team leader of 30 people, she is working with Big Bazaar and she is earning 35,000 a month. The whole family has been alleviated out of poverty. And she is a role model, a celebrity in her village. 50 other girls from that village came to us and they said they want to do the same thing. So this is what women's empowerment does. So I have hundreds of such examples. Now even in case of Nirasha, she has got married now. Her husband is working. They have taken a flat in the city. Both are earning very well and they are, they are on way to being a very, very productive part of this national development process. But how many are we able to take out? That is the question. And the question also is, what are the barriers? Why women are not coming out? Even though we want women to come out, even though the government has hundreds of schemes where they are supporting women, but why? What keeps them, what holds them back in coming out? Just to share some examples. There is a place called Cherapunji in Meghalaya. Everybody knows that it's the highest rainfall area in the world. But it's like water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. The tribes, East Khasi Hills, women in these tribes, they only know how to fetch water. Every day a woman will hold a pitcher at her back, go uphill, downhill, find a stream, take water, come back, do five rounds. Where is the time for education? Where is the time for skill development? We had reached out for a project in such an area in East Khasi Hills 
and when we saw women were not participating, they were not available for training, then we realized what was happening in that community. What were the barriers which were keeping women out of the development process? So here we realize that women, for coming out, they need opportunities. So two things at RO Foundation we realized early on during our projects was women, first thing they needed was a freedom of choice. They should have a freedom of choice about their lives, about what they want to do, how they want to spend their lives, what they want to achieve. And second is the equal opportunities. Sadly, in our country, both are not there. Women's voice is not there. Their freedom of choice is not there because families don't allow. There is backwardness, there is stigma, there is safety, there is security. They cannot do what they want. And even if they want to do what they want, even if they are allowed to do what they want, where are the opportunities for them? So they are just caught up in this vicious cycle of freedom of choices and availability of opportunities. So that is where RO comes in. And uh, we are facing several challenges in bringing women out. A host of challenges, including the challenge of COVID, where we felt that all the work that we had done has again regressed, has regressed back to the same thing, where women were the victims of job hits. When jobs were taken away, when industries closed, when companies closed, it was the women who were worst hit because men continued their job. But women, they were taking care of the family, of children. Most of the women, several of the women lost their jobs. They were victims of domestic violence more than ever before. So I just want to say that whatever may happen, if there is a disaster, if there is a conflict, if there is a calamity, it is always the women who are suffering, who are taking the brunt of all these things. So what do we do about it? How do we bring women out? How do we increase gender diversity in workplaces? That's the big question. Women's empowerment is a very burning topic these days. Everybody loves to talk about women's empowerment. You go to any forum, everybody is talking about women's empowerment. But what is it about? They're all talking about gender equality, gender parity. So many terms are thrown at us, gender discrimination. But what are we talking about when we, our gender parity index stands at 135? So another report by McKinsey says that with the pace that we are going about achieving women's empowerment or gender parity or gender equality, it will take us at least 200 years to achieve that parity. Isn't it shocking? And by that time, where will we be? So that is what we need to work on. We need to accelerate the progress towards women's empowerment. We need to take up all measures to improve gender diversity in workplaces. How do we achieve it? It has to be a very conscious effort, both from girl side and from boy side or women and men. When women are in workplaces, we have to be sensitive about that. I think men have to be more sensitive so right from the beginning, when a child is born, they need to have a child-friendly approach. They need to have a girl-friendly approach. They need to have a woman-friendly approach and see to it that they are comfortable in the workplaces. They are given the kind of advantage at the workplaces which they need. A lot of laws are there against sexual harassment, which we find is a major, major uh, deterrent in workplaces. <clears throat> they are not given equal pay for equal work. They are not given timely promotions. There are many factors where women feel disadvantaged. So we have to take care of that. Everybody has to consciously make an effort to give them equality. At the same time, I would also urge girls to support each other because the girls also sometimes we feel that they are not supporting. Women supporting women is a big thing. Wherever we have women leaders, it is seen that they are supporting women and uh, there is more gen gender diversity in those uh, workplaces. At the same time, we also feel that women should not take advantage of their position as women. Sometimes that is also seen in the workplaces or in general in the society. Women are taking advantage of their role as women or their position as a woman, gender-based position, which should not be allowed uh, in the society. So. 
everybody every member of our society of our community both men and women need a lot of sensitization on these gender issues they are very sensitive issues in the community many a times people don't come out openly with the problems related to gender related to diversity related to gender discrimination so we have to sensitize uh, people sensitize both men and women in the workplaces to handle those issues with utmost sensitivity with an ultimate objective of an inclusive growth of an inclusive environment of an inclusive workplace where both the genders flourish equally and both are complementary to each other rather than you know creating rifts and only one gender flourishes we should ha go hand in hand so let us all work towards empowerment women's empowerment and remove all the barriers to achieve gender equality and gender equity and rise as a society as a community as a nation thank you so much and uh, i would like take this opportunity to thank dlc uh, to thank jimmy uh, for giving me this opportunity to come here and share my thoughts on women's empowerment and also how women's empowerment can be a vehicle for national development and progress thank you very much <laughs>